Hello and welcome to Weird Things and Wine, the show where we sip wine and talk about all things weird. My name is Tash. And my name is Mia. And today we will be talking about Krampus. Shall we jump right into it? Let's! <laughs> Cozy up in front of the fireplace with a warm cup of cocoa and join us on this December evening for our extra special holiday episode. Cheers! Krampus, also known as the Christmas Demon, is essentially Santa's evil twin. Instead of a white beard and a sleigh full of presents, this spirit has coarse dark fur and a bag filled with the souls of children. If you're nice, you may wake up to a stocking full of presents, but if you're not so nice, you may receive coal instead. And for the especially misbehaved, prepare to be whisked away to hell where you will be the main course at the Feast of the Dead. You better watch out because Krampus is coming to town. On the note of Krampus coming to town, what do you think of the lyrics, he sees you when you're sleeping, <laughs> he knows when you're awake, he knows whether you've been bad or good, so be good for goodness sake. I love the scare tactics of parents just like <laughs> casually work into Christmas. <laughs> it's a time of year for togetherness and joy. And frightening your children. And frightening your children. <laughs> Krampus is specifically popular in Austria and Germany. Yes, mostly Austria, although the name Krampus was derived from the German word Krampen, which translated to English means claw. Isn't that nice and not intimidating at all? <laughs> what a happy name for such a holiday really? creature. Hi, claw. <laughs> Claws. Claw. Oh my god, like, like Santa Claus? Yeah. <laughs> wow, we haven't even had anything to drink yet. This is going to be such a fun episode. So Krampus is described as looking kind of like a giant goat crossed with a human. Krampus is supposedly usually darker in color, usually furry, with eyes that aren't glowing. That aren't glowing? Correct, aren't glowing. Okay. I have not seen anywhere that states it has glowing eyes. I specifically googled if Krampus' eyes glow and I found nothing. Okay. <laughs> Usually, Krampus has normal hands and either one normal human foot and one goat foot or two goat feet. Yeah. And by that, I mean hooves. Hooves. Hooves or hooves? <laughs> <laughs> Is it hoof? It's hoof. Hoove. Hoove. Hoof. <laughs> wow, I didn't feel this dumb when I woke up this morning. <laughs> I've also heard, like, depictions that he has a long pointed tongue. Yeah, That's I've heard weird. that too. I saw some sites that said, like, the tongue being sharp could be derivative from, like, a serpent's tongue. Like a reptile's tongue okay. that sticks out to grab its prey. Krampus also carries chains with bells of different sizes, and in some lore, these bells are thought to represent the Christian church binding the devil. So I have also seen somewhere that he'll carry chains all the time and sometimes we'll have like a bushel of branches to beat people with. Yeah, the branches are bundles of birch and they're oh. called rutin? Routin? I think rutin. Yeah, I think rutin. Yeah, like a root. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly like that. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what he uses to kind of like whip people with. He also has a sack for the worst of the worst children. I don't know what children can do that is bad enough to warrant this, but he will eat them, or he'll drown them, or he'll either take them to hell. See, you know what's really interesting? I didn't come across any, like, rules that kids must follow to right. not be taken by Krampus. You would think that there would be more information out there for you the worried think. children of the world. <laughs> it's just like, it's, it's a trap. You have to be- Honestly, you have to be on your bestest behavior or else. The legend of Krampus is very old. It's like not known exactly how old, but it's um, based in pagan celebrations of the winter solstice, so it predates Christianity. I thought that was really interesting. Ooh, let's talk about some of the um, different lore that surrounds Krampus, because there's a Ooh. lot of conflicting... Oh my goodness. There's so many different stories. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Because in some lore, he is Saint Nicholas's assistant, and then in others, he is his evil brother. <laughs> In others, he's like the yang part of the yin and yang, so he is an exact copy of Saint Nicholas, but evil. Yeah, it's like essentially a shadow. Mm -hmm. And the strangest one that I read was that he is one third of the Christmas good men, I think is what it was called. The Christmas good men? Yeah. I've never heard of that term no, before. No, me neither. That's weird. The other one I researched but didn't make any sense, it was Grandfather Frost is the third one. 
So there's Saint Nick, Krampus, and then Grandfather Frost. Okay. In Norse mythology, Krampus is the son of the goddess of the underworld, Hel. And Santa is kind of like Odin, who is the god of the hunt or the war. Interesting. Yeah. It's also interesting to note that Krampus kind of looks like satyrs from Greek mythology or fauns from Roman mythology. He's also depicted how often the devil is depicted as kind of like a goat-like creature. I heard like one person say that Krampus could be like a species instead of like an individual entity. There's not much more that he said about it other than... No. no. (laughs) But it's kind of weird to Santa is one man, but if there's like a whole pack of Krampus... Crampies? Uh, Crampies? <laughs> Krampus? I don't like that. Cramposse. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> a Cramposse? <laughs> I did find a few different variations of Krampus from different cultures in Europe, especially. In Germany, we got Belschnickel. This variation visits children in the weeks before Christmas to distribute either candy or beatings. Wow. Okay. What a fun sort of strange guy (laughs) seems to have a lot of mood swings candy or beatings in germany and austria we got frau perchta and this is a witch who will tear out your organs and replace them with garbage if you're bad what (laughs) What? i'm sorry tear out your organs and replace them with garbage yeah not just tear out your organs and leave you to die no she'll replace them with With garbage garbage. (laughs) and then in france we got Herr fouettard that's literally, I think it's Father Whipper, because pear means father, and I think Puetar means whipper. whipper. So what you're saying is, this entity is negative. All of these are negative entities. <laughs> <laughs> They're based on Krampus, the, the Christmas devil. Ooh, in Iceland, we got the Yule Lads, who are 13 trolls who cause trouble and steal things around Christmas, so as to scare kids into behaving. Oh, I think I actually quite like that one. The Yule Lads. Right? That just sounds like fun. Yeah, like, they're just I buddies. Wanna, I want to join the Yule Lads. Yeah. Oh, good luck with this one. <laughs> um, <laughs> in Iceland, Jolako Turin. Um, but that translates literally into Christmas Cat. This one's my favorite. <laughs> the Christmas Cat. Isn't that cute? That is really cute. It's really cute. This is a cat who eats children if they don't finish all their chores before Christmas. What an adorable cat! (laughs) Wow! Let's talk about some of the traditions surrounding Krampus. I'm really sorry about my pronunciation, but... We're gonna do our best. Yeah. (laughs) On December 5th, the night before the day of St. Nicholas, is Krampus not. I've heard that in Europe, it's actually the 6th. Europe is supposedly 24 hours behind the rest of the world on when Krampus Schnott is. Okay, so on December 5th or 6th is Krampus Schnott, and this is the day before the Feast of St. Nicholas when Krampus rules the town. Ooh. Ooh. (laughs) Krampus is night on the town. (laughs) Um, Krampus and St. Nick are supposed to visit children on this night and leave either gifts or coal or rutin in their shoes sorry in their shoes yeah i think it's kind of like here in canada we have stockings and in some parts of europe they have little shoes that they put out so it's not like their actual shoes it's like a special pair of shoes in the past it was probably like their actual shoes and nowadays it's probably it's just just a separate set of shoes yeah (laughs) So that's a tradition in some parts of Europe, specifically Austria, and it's also an excuse for adults, specifically young men, to dress up in masks and parade through the streets, kind of like Krampus. This is called like a Krampus run, like a parade almost. It's Krampus Lauf. Krampus Lauf. Sorry for my pronunciation, but that's like what the run parade thing is called. Yeah. Yeah. So I did see different accounts of people that have survived this specific event. And some people say that it's just like fun, you know, Mm -hmm. just a fun kind of parade thing to celebrate the evening. Yeah. There's others that suggest that it's a little bit more sinister than just playful, you know, scaring people and slightly chasing after them. Some events suggest that certain times have been quite violent. Yeah. Yeah. There's differing reports on that. I guess it Mm -hmm. depends on, like, the specific person. Because if you give a certain person power and a mask, they're going to, like... They're going to do bad things. Yeah. 
So these young men specifically will chase through the streets and chase after young women. Specifically. Specifically. <laughs> and swat them with Rutin. What a fun game. Yeah, it's supposed to kind of like um, symbolize fertility. And others say that it scares away the spirits of winter. Oh, okay. I mean, I, I could be into the second one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of like a parade, a haunted house, and like a expedition all get mixed into one. I also found some reports that kind of like how you're supposed to leave cookies for Santa, you're supposed to leave schnapps for Krampus. In some parts of the world, parents keep kind of like a gold rutin in their house as a decoration so as to remind children of the story of Krampus and to be well behaved. There seems to be quite a few places around the world that either leave like gold routines, like you said, or statues of Krampus as like a threat. Yeah. <laughs> be good or else. A scare tactic. <laughs> yeah. In some stories, kids will get a gold routine as well as presents from St. Nicholas if they're good, and a silver one and all their presents taken from them by Krampus if they're bad. It's interesting how some of the traditions from mm. Europe have kind of come over into, like, Canada and the U.S. The coal in the shoes has become the coal in the stockings, and the rutin has become briefs. Yeah, I had never made that connection before, but it makes a lot of sense. So, in the 1800s, it became customary to give greeting cards called Krampus Karten with the image <laughs> of Krampus. Sorry about my pronunciation, again. It sounds sweet. <laughs> In these cards, he'd either be kidnapping children or seducing women. Yeah, there's a lot of seducing women. So a book of these greeting cards called The Devil in Design was published in 2004, leading to increasing popularity in Canada and the U.S. Okay. I don't understand why people would give greeting cards with Krampus. It's kind of like... It's like, instead of a birthday card, you give someone, like, a card with the Grim Reaper on it or something. Yeah, like a death card. Yeah. It's weird. It's not like a happy, yeah. joyful creature. No. Some people really like Krampus because it was seen as a way to go against tradition and the commercialization of Christmas. I, I could see that. Yeah. yeah. Until Hollywood got his hands on it and then uh, commercialized it. Yeah. There's actually a surprising amount of movies or TV shows that have Krampus in it. I was not expecting that. Yeah. I've watched a couple of the Krampus movies. I've watched like one super B-rate one because I thought it was a good one and it was not. Aww. <laughs> I could not get through it and I love horror movies but I was just like, no. The 2015 version with Adam Scott, that's that's the guy who plays him, and I like him, so I watched it, and it was actually a pretty good movie. Oh, so recommended? Yeah, it's kind of like um, a horror comedy, which are my favorite type of Ooh, movies. Ooh, okay. Other variations of Krampus have been featured on TV shows such as Supernatural, The Colbert Report, American Dad, and even The Office. The Krampus Knot, including the Krampus Laugh, yeah. has kind of come over into Canada and the US as well. I saw one that happened, I think it was a yearly since like 2012 in Edmonton. And then in Vancouver, I think they had kind of a little celebration as well. Wow. Yeah, and there's lots that have happened in the US as well. So that's cool. People are kind of embracing that tradition. Yeah. People will use any excuse to get drunk and run through the streets and chase big True girls. though. And like dress up. All right, so I have a few fun facts slash theories about Krampus for you. So apparently Krampus has no weakness, but is arguably quite emotionally intelligent. So if a child that would have normally been, you know, deemed one of the bad kids, if they would have given Krampus a piece of fruit, which was quite highly valued, it was also something that St. Nick was said to bring around, but if the child gave him this piece of fruit, he would typically enjoy the gift and would also share it with anyone that's around at the time and then would leave peacefully. That's sweet. Isn't it? Yeah. It really brought a, a new side to Krampus for me. Imagine though, like, the kid just gives him, like, a single grape and then he has to split it up into, like, <laughs> With his claws. Yes. <laughs> Here's your piece. <laughs> I, I, like, imagine a parent, like, they know their kid has been bad, you know? It's been a rough year. <laughs> so they, like, okay, here's this strawberry. You're going to give this to Krampus, <laughs> and you won't get taken to hell. But if you eat it, then you're dying to <laughs> Honestly. This is your final chance, Jimmy. <laughs> Don't mess this up. <laughs> 
Something that I thought was interesting, out of every single thing that I saw, Krampus always has some sort of weapon. If it's not chained, it's a bushel. If it's not a bushel, it's like a rock. <laughs> Is it ever like a machine gun? <laughs> no, it's never a machine gun. He's behind the times. So among the uh, internet forums, Super Joker TV's suggestion, they suggest the following. That Krampus is immortal and completely void of any possibility of contracting diseases. That makes sense. It does, it right? Santa can't get COVID, right? They've been around for forever. They can't contract anything. He is also apparently not able to be harmed by any weapon or normal weapon as we know it. So like a bazooka would do nothing to him. So Santa has to have the same effect. I imagine some yeah. people have tried to shoot Santa before. Probably. Another feature is that he has super strength and super stamina. I have another one for you that's going to be surprising. Okay. He has the gift of teleportation. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Because, like, how else are you supposed to get to, like, every house, you know? Like, Santa probably has that too, right? I thought he just had super fast reindeer. Like, he himself was not fast, but his reindeer were fast. I imagine he'd have to be super fast, too, because even if you could teleport to each house, you'd still need to go through the house. That's a, <laughs> that's a really good point. I just never pictured him as someone that was fast. Wait till you hear this next one. <laughs> Krampus has the power of summoning. He specifically can summon snowmen, creating an army of snowmen. Does he make the snowmen? He just, like, snaps his fingers, and okay. the snowmen appear out of the snow. Do they look like snowmen with, like, the three balls, or do they look like men made out of snow? Honestly, I pictured... There's this one thing that I can't get out of my mind, and I can't remember where I saw it, but it's, like, these angry snowmen with the three balls and, like, stick arms and, like, angry stick eyebrows and an angry crooked carrot nose and, like, a snow hat, and they're coming after these something, and they're walking, like, waddling. Okay. <laughs> The next power is the power to reanimate, which means he can turn corpses that are nearby into zombies under his control. Like, how often is that power, like, handy? Like, how I often would are imagine, you around a corpse? That's a really good point. Does this include, like, corpses buried underground from, like, thousands of years ago? Like, skeletons? Yeah. But, like, partial skeletons? Like, fossilized? It's just, like, a giant rock comes up? <laughs> I think there's too many loopholes in this. Yeah, this is too easy to pick apart. Um, the last power is the power to manipulate weather. It's interesting how none of these are related to each other. I know! Like, none of them really connect. Yeah. I also don't understand why he would need to manipulate weather when he's just stealing children, unless he just puts them in a sack and then calls a tornado to take him away. Well, I also don't understand why he would need to have an army of corpses as well as an army of snowmen. <laughs> That's a, actually a really good point. Do they meld together? Ew. <laughs> Ooh. Don't like that. I am now going to tell you the best news ever. Okay. You're going to be so excited to hear this. Okay. Krampus can be killed. I thought he couldn't be killed. <laughs> he just said that he had no weaknesses. I know. That he's immortal. Yeah, I know. Super Joker TV, in the same post, said that Krampus was immortal and not able to be harmed by any weapons. And then below, said that he can be killed by being stabbed with a stake made of evergreen that's been dipped in the blood of the dark side of God himself. Quote, unquote. Okay, well, I mean... See, but it's possible. I don't think God has blood. That's what literally what I was thinking. I was like, that doesn't make any sense. He probably, somebody just asked him one day, they were like, hey Krampus, here's some schnapps, how can you be killed? And he was like, you know what, let me tell you. <laughs> and then he told them the most impossible way. What is the dark side of God? Honestly, I have no idea, because it's not Satan, or else they would have said the blood of Satan, who was also just an entity that doesn't have blood. Is it like the dark side of the moon that doesn't exist? I think so. Krampus was just playing a joke. He was just doing a bit. He's laughing at us now. Is <laughs> Krampus laughing? <laughs> so, good news. Though there are many other entities tied to this time of the year, as you mentioned, and even others that mm -hmm. don't quite relate to Krampus or Saint Nick, Krampus seems to be the one that never ever hides himself, disguises himself, or changes his shape, which is really great because you'll always be able to see him coming. That makes me happy. Right? Yeah. Isn't that relieving in a way? Yeah. Okay, so in my research, I took a slight turn and I went down the rabbit hole of goats and like goats as a meaning. As a meaning? Like as a symbol? Yeah. 
when I first typed in the meaning of goats. <laughs> the meaning of goats? <laughs> yeah. Because they're very symbolic in a lot of ways. I mean, you're right. That's a weird way to phrase it, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I then typed in the symbolic meaning of goats and that got me a lot further. <laughs> Are you ready for some information on goats that you may have not known before? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the first thing that I found is, um, do you think that goats became so entwined with these really strange sort of entities and demons and that sort of stuff because of their ability to scream like a human? Are you serious? Yeah. I didn't know that. They don't scream quite as much as a human as like, I think foxes sound a little more human-like, but I could definitely understand why you would mistake a goat for a human scream, I think. I mean, I've never seen one in real life, so I'm only going off of things that I found on the internet. I'm sure you've seen a goat before. I'm sure we passed some in field. I just can't remember. I know we've passed many deer. I know I've seen a bear and a moose. Wild. I think foxes, again, sound more like humans. But I could certainly, in the middle of the night, or just from a distance, mistake that as a human scream. I mean, it's not gonna, like, try to hurt you with the goat. Exactly. It's just, you know, psychologically terrifying. Okay, I understand why people might, like, hear that and be like, oh, that's demonic, though. People thought everything yeah, was demonic I'm, back then. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you know what the Baphomet is? I am probably pronouncing that wrong. Um, it sounds familiar, but I don't know what, the, what it is. Essentially, back in the day, it was a god-like figure of a goat that was worshipped. Oh, it's a goat god. Mm -hmm. It's a god goat. Goat god sounds better. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so the sigil of Baphomet is the insignia of the Church of Satan that appeared in 1968, which is an upside-down pentagram with a goat face in it. Okay. Weird. I thought that goats had some meaning in darker situations. Yeah, I didn't quite know that. Could it also be because a lot of times people sacrifice goats? If we're talking about Christianity and the Bible, you weren't supposed to sacrifice a goat. Well, you shouldn't sacrifice anything. No, I, I, I agree. <laughs> I don't agree with sacrificing. In sacrifices, you're supposed to sacrifice like the best of your herd. And the sheep or the lamb was the preferred animal because they were easy to bleed and they followed. Whereas the goat was stubborn and didn't listen to anything that you said. Okay. So the goat was like... The goat, in a sense, represented the devil. Okay. Yeah. Personally, I find goats both intimidating and adorable in specific situations. If a goat screamed at me, I wouldn't be very happy. Baby goats are really cute. They're the most playful, adorable things ever. I love baby They're goats. so cute. Mountain goats are awesome. They're on like a full like 90 degree cliff. That's like impressive. Okay, well that's Krampus. That's Krampus. What do you think of Krampus? I think that it's an interesting scare tactic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, parents like scare their kids into being behaved all the time, right? Like, mm -hmm. like that's a little extreme. You're gonna get dragged to hell if you don't be good. Mm -hmm. It's like the same, or like a slightly different adaptation of the boogeyman. Yeah. So mm. that's Krampus for ya. Merry Krampmas. Merry Krampmas! <laughs> that's definitely a greeting card. With a bunch of girls on the yeah. card, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. That's it, folks. Happy holidays. Be safe. Please be safe. Drink wine. Yeah, stay weird, drink wine. Stay weird, drink wine. Yeah. Thank you for listening to this episode, our special holiday episode yes. of Weird Things in Wine. Hopefully you enjoyed. Happy New Year. See you next year. Yeah, we'll see you in 2021. Again, thank you for joining us. Stay safe. Stay safe. Stay weird. Drink wine. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, yeah, because he's like a jolly old man with a beard. He's yeah. He's like old and wrinkles. Does he have wrinkles? I thought I just had like Could you imagine of- seeing like an old man <laughs> without wrinkles? He has like the beard and the belly, but no wrinkles. Well, but he never really has wrinkles in the photos. He has like baby face with like plump cheeks that are rosy, doesn't he? And like a giant beard. I mean, you're not wrong, but that's like not okay. <laughs> Honestly, though, if I could become Santa, I probably would. I wouldn't. That is such a stressful job. You have to try and sneak into people's houses, every single house in the world. That's... Are you prepared to sneak into every single house in the world? Well, think about it. Like, you, like, work one day a year. But how busy are you in that one day a year? And you have to keep track of the elves the rest of the year to make presents. And you have to keep track of all the kids throughout the year. Oh my gosh, I'm stressed already. Okay, so <laughs> Mia doesn't want to be Santa. <laughs> you can be Krampus and I'll be Santa. I like fruit. I can be Krampus. <laughs> I feel like this entire episode is just bloopers. <laughs> this is why it's the perfect Christmas episode. You yeah, know, you we're jolly. Just, we are so jolly. We are so jolly. And my jolly. cheeks are probably rosy by now. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> <laughs> are you supposed to get people gifts on New Year's? No. No. I don't think. You just get, get drunk, drunk on New Year's. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, happy, uh, happy 2020. Thank God it's 2021. <laughs>